Welcome back to Publishing Power. My name is Joe, and this is Christina Stanley with me from Fictionary. We are so glad to have you here today so we can continue on our journey with the 38 story elements. Hi, Christina. Good morning, Joellen. Okay, we are down to the last two of the setting elements. Oh, this is a lot. This is a lot. Today, we're going to talk about weather because that's what humans do. We talk about weather all the time, but how do we write about weather and make it interesting? Because I find weather quite boring, to be honest. <laughs> yes. And in fact, weather can be very exciting. So when you talk about weather, we're really talking about looking at weather in the context of your story and how is it increasing tension or conflict or how is it giving an emotional beat to the writer? How is it creating the mood for this scene? Weather can do so much for a story and be really exciting mm. to it. We all just have to learn how to do that and not just put it's raining. Yeah. It rained. Boring. It rained. We don't care. <laughs> Maybe we do, but not really. No, not at all. So it's it's important. Yes. So I'm I'm gonna give you a little personal story on on how weather can change a scene. So I was with my husband in the Bahamas and we were on a sailboat. And we were in this anchorage where there was poker night. And every Tuesday, everybody went to the island, all the boats are left by themselves. And so this particular night, I decided I wanted to stay home and write. I was very close to finishing my third novel and I thought, okay, I've been on the whole evening and this is what I'm gonna do. Off goes my husband, the anchorage is empty. I'm sitting there happy as can be and the weather changes. A lightning and thunderstorm comes through, the wind picks up, the waves pick up, and now I'm alone, and now it gets dark. So it's dark, it's scary, and okay, I'll admit I was a little bit scared, because I've got the boat by myself. So I turn on the engines, I get my radar going, and I have to sit up in the cockpit to do this, and there's lightning flashing around, and you can see over to the right, there's a boat that's dragging, and there's nobody on it, but I can't do anything about it. People on land can't get out, I can't get in. And all of that tension and stress is from the weather. Had it been just a nice night where my goal was to sit down and finish my novel, great goal, which I did not accomplish, I failed at, but the weather just came in and swooped it right out of my control and added a whole bunch. So if that was a story in a book, there's some tension, there's some conflict, there's some stress, and then it makes it much more interesting. Exactly, exactly. So how do we find the pitfalls when we're not using weather right? How do we fix that as writers? Right. So first of all, when you're looking at your scenes, you want to pay attention to, do you ever use weather or not? So, and, you know, if you're writing a scene where someone is trapped in a basement and there is no weather, well, there is no weather and that's okay, but there'll be other environmental things. Maybe it's really cold or maybe it's really hot or maybe there's no water, whatever. There'll be some other environmental thing. Mm -hmm. But if there's any outside weather, there's several things you can do. So first, if you're outside, are you using weather? That's question number one. Are you using it appropriately so uh, you can use it for contrast? If somebody is having a really bad day and it's beautiful out and sunny and there's birds chirping, it's that perfect day and yet disaster strikes, mm -hmm. you can do that. You can use it, like is in my example, to make things scarier and more sus suspenseful. So instead of contrasting, you just build it up, right? You can use it to cause problems for your protagonist. They are, you know, driving their wife to the hospital and the road washes out and they can't get there and now they're stuck. You know, so really every scene outside, think about what are you doing with the weather and could you do more with it? Okay, great. So the pitfalls there, we need to look and see what we're gonna, if we're using it correctly or not, how are we gonna check on this? So, <laughs> It's like every other story element. When you go through, you know, you should be marking for every scene that's outside, do you use weather or not? And even inside, you can use it. You're in a hurricane and the weather's outside, but the characters are inside. So you have to acknowledge each scene, did you use weather or not? And then, yes, great. Did you use it to the maximum effect? So can you make your protagonist's life better? Or can you make it worse because of the weather? Those are the two options. Neutral is boring. You want in your, you know, your character arc, your character's emotion should be going up and down. 
So weather should be helping up, down, up, down process. Nice, 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 nice. nice. Okay, so we're gonna check our moods to the weather and make sure that we're going well. Again, folks, head back to all of your scenes. And you know, we have all of these story elements from Fictionary that we really, really wanna go through. But if it, it, it's so important that you don't overlook any of these because it can really uh, emphasize and magnify your writing and really connect with your readers. And it's really not about your words anymore. It's all about connecting with your readers and giving them the best experience possible. So again, thank you for joining us today. We hope that you all follow along, subscribe and Come along for the rest of the series as we finish up our last story element in settings in our next week. See you then. All right. See you, Joellen.